So he said, okay, let's make peace with Israel. Let's get money from the United States. Let's get cheap fertilizers and pesticides and technology from Israel. And I'm going to save my country. When he came to Jerusalem, he was a much greater patriot than all the terrorists are who believe by destruction they can achieve something. But this doesn't yet give you the idea what's really happening here. Because using solar energy is something which doesn't exist in any other place in the world. Well, I told you, it's based on the climatic conditions. It's based on the unique concentration of minerals in the sea. But it needs something else. Flat areas. Because in deep water, sun has no effect. There is no storage of energy in any ocean, in any river. Energy is simply warming up the molecule of water. They are getting lighter, coming up to the surface, and evaporate. There is no concentration of energy in water, unless the water is in closed evaporation ponds, which are very, very shallow, and the brine concentrated, and then it's easy to bring the brine to saturation. But look at the map, the Dead Sea. And we are here at the moment. And Masada is here. And Engedi is here. And you can see that the Dead Sea has two basins, a southern basin, which ends opposite Masada, and the northern basin, which starts from Masada to the north. And they are different, one from the other. This one is very, very shallow. The depth of the water in this area has never been, throughout history, more than a few feet. And the shores are flat as if God had prepared the area for our industrial enterprises. But here opposite Masada, the flat shore suddenly becomes a steep wall. And the depth of the water here isn't anymore a few feet like here, but 400 feet deep. And opposite En Gedi, it is 1,200 feet deep, which means, obviously, that nothing can be done in this area. This is like any other body of water, only more concentrated. Nothing can be done here. This is ideal. And this is the reason why everything, everything is here and nothing is here. But the Dead Sea is evaporating such an enormous amount of water every year that the level of the sea drops every summer more than three feet, every summer. Having no rain in this area, except a few drops in winter. The question is, how does the Dead Sea still exist? Every year it drops more than three feet, no rain. It should have vanished many years ago. But the Dead Sea was the same Dead Sea as you can see on the map for thousands of years. The Dead Sea was balanced. How? The Jordan River is coming here into the Dead Sea and replacing every year about 60% of evaporation. 20% come from the Jordanian side, rivers and floods. 10% come from the Israeli side, floods. Because you should keep in mind that when it rains in Jerusalem, it takes only a few hours and the rain is in the Dead Sea. Not as rain, as floods. Everything coming down into the Dead Sea. And 10% come from very concentrated mineral springs, unique concentrated mineral springs from the bottom of the sea. And what happened throughout history was that in summer, the level dropped. Until the end of spring, it was back again. The Dead Sea was balanced throughout history until the state of Israel was born. Because you should know, in Israel, nothing is balanced, no budget, no politician, and not even the Dead Sea. Because very shortly after the state of Israel was born, we learned that more than 60% of the country has no water. In order to live here, you have to supply water. The only source Israel has to take water from is the Jordan River. And so we built a project. I believe it's the most beautiful achievement of the state of Israel. We are pumping the water from the Jordan, north of the Sea of Galilee, down into the Negev. And we turned a desert into a living, blooming area. 
This is a miracle, never happened before in history. But it interfered with the balance of water in the Dead Sea. The Jordanians have seen what we do and claim to have the same right. And I must say, they have the same right used to use the Jordan River. And so did, they did exactly what we, we do on the northern end of the Sea of Galilee, on the southern end. But together, the two countries are taking away so much water from the Dead Sea that the level every year drops a bit more. And it dropped in the last 20 years more than 30 feet already. But here it was 1,200 feet deep. And 30 feet less is not so much important. But here it was shallow, I told you. And the Dead Sea, which was here during the British mandate, was here already 20 years ago. In 1975, the Dead Sea was here. In 76, it ended already here. And since 77, it is where you can see it from Masada today, opposite Masada. The Dead Sea has vanished from its southern basin. There was a regression of 18 miles in 20 years. The Dead Sea has only the northern basin, and this has vanished. But I told you that the Dead Sea can be exploited only here, and here is no more water. Now look at the model, and you will understand what happened, and what is more important, what is going to happen. Because this is the southern basin, and we are here. And Masada is here. These are the hotels of Ein Bokek the Moriah Hotel, the Sulphur Springs, and this is the mountain of Sodom. And this is the plain of Amiaz, an area without soil, without water, never has anything been here, never any kind of life. But we hope in 10 years, here, look at the place, there will stand our solar power stations, and then, the revolution of the Dead Sea will start. And you'll hear in a minute why. The Dead Sea works. The border is in the middle. To the west, it is Israel. To the east, the kingdom of Jordan. The mountains of Judea, the mountains of Moab, the mountains of Edom, and here have been Sodom and Gomorrah, never on this side. And all the stories about Lot's wife here have been invented only by Israeli tourist guides. <laughs> <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah have been here because the Bible tells us everything. And the Bible tells us that while Abraham and Lot were living around Beersheba, their shepherds were fighting for water, nothing else. But Abraham was a peace-loving man, and he says to Lot, we shall not fight, we are brethren. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. This was Abraham. Today you wouldn't find people like Abraham in Israel, but this was Abraham. <laughs> and Lot, says the Bible, has chosen Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says, why? Because they were blooming like Egypt. Blooming like Egypt, where? On a salt mountain? In an area where without soil, without water, there is nothing to be able to live, not to bloom. But look here, look at this. Between the mountains of Moab and Edom, a small river is flowing. But this river in winter brings floods, floods, which are rains falling on the mountains. And those floods bring soil into the riverbed. And what you can see here, this peninsula is the only fertile area in the whole region. And on this peninsula are the sweetest springs in the Middle East. Now, look at it. Fertile soil, sweet water, an open hothouse. Like the Garden of Eden. <laughs> 